but today's session uh, what we'll try and do is uh, <coughs> they will try and replicate this chart we will understand uh, there's a chart called candlestick chart we'll see where it can be used and uh, then we'll get into how we can uh, create this chart and towards the end of the session i will I'll, oh, i also have a couple of tips uh for for you so so that will be a broad uh, uh, uh plan for today's session so <coughs> first coming to the candlestick chart so we can see uh let me uh, explain what it uh, information it, it contains so i normally uh, as of now i'm connected to stock price data okay facebook's historical stock price data and i've filtered for last three months and uh, uh, what this candlestick uh, chart is portraying here uh, is basically uh, the stock price details for example if whenever you are interested uh, in about uh, about stock price uh, how is it trending over day, day across day so f- there are four things that you will be concerned with normally what is the high uh, opening and closing price on per each day and what is the high and low so high and low represents hey uh, uh what was the uh, highest uh, point that the stock price has reached on that day and the lowest price that the stock price has reached on on that day so and this type of a chart uh, will basically uh, help convey that that four metrics on a day to day basis uh, very uh, conveniently uh, for the end user so if we see here so how to read this chart so each mark is a day okay and uh, on the each mark i have two oh, two types of uh, i would say uh, individual marks so on each day so one is this thickest bar and one is the other thin bar we can call it as line so and there's a color so for example uh, uh, if you see in the tool tip uh, the opening price on, as on this day is 279.16 and closing price is 286.55 so uh, what's happening here is that uh, the opening and closing price is represented by the thickest bar so basically it's starting from here to 79.6 and it's going all the way towards up uh, towards uh, 286.5 uh, uh, and uh, the line that represents the thin line that is uh, representing the high and low price hey uh, the highest price has been though the closing price was 286 and opening was 279 but on that day the highest point reached was 289 and the lowest point that was reached was 278 and likewise for this one as well the high and low being the edges of thin line and the opening and closing being the edges of the uh, thick bar and what the color has uh, what co- color represents here is uh, about the uh, 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 stock price change okay for example here we see that the opening price is low and the closing price is high so at the end of the day stock price has increased on this day uh, so that's why it's blue in color but whereas if you see here uh, the opening price is 286.25 and the closing price is 281.85 so the stock price has decreased as on this day so it, it's basically hey it started over here on the top of the thick bar and reduced and uh, uh, closed down on the end of the thick bar so it's uh, so wherever we see red color it's basically uh, stock price has decreased and wherever we see blue color and the stock price has increased so that's how we read a candle uh, uh, candlestick chart on a, on a stock price we can use it for any other similar cases as well uh, so if we see there are few days that are missing for example here it's on uh, 12.4 uh, and here we have 12.7 so in between there are two days uh, five and six are missing because uh, normally this data is uh, is having only weekdays data so any saturday sundays or any public holidays will be missing so let's uh, uh, create how uh, let, let's see how to create a candlestick chart okay and uh, I, i'm working on the same data uh, facebook data so I have these uh, uh, data fields with me, the date column, and as on each day, what is the opening and uh, closing price, what is the high and low price. So <coughs> first of all, let me first filter. I have uh, uh, many years of data, so but as of now, I let me just select three months, so that way it will be easier for us. Uh, let me. So I think this, these two should be fine for now. So, and then let's drag the continuous month. 
I'm sorry, the day, since we are looking at day level days. And then first let's try and create the thick bar. So which is basically about opening and closing price. So let me pull open some open so it has given me an opening a trend line for all the opening price and let me change the mark type from uh, line to a uh, uh, can bar so now we see that hey for each on each day uh, at a certain opening price of that day uh, i have a, a can bar that is opening up now <coughs> my, now my intention as we saw the uh, i should have the length uh, of this bar uh, reciprocating or uh, corresponding to the size of the change right and i can uh, obviously I have low uh, open and close so i can create a different a calculated field between the, uh, these two uh, giving me the difference that will that, that i can use as a size for that particular mark so that will kind of give me the uh, 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 it, it creates the can bar like a bar chart sort of thing so let me create change in price mm. whatever the close minus open click ok and let me put this in size ok now based on this change uh, all my GAN bars are uh, sized in, in length so for example let me just pull in also uh, close in detail so i can just see it. <coughs> opening is on 279 almost on the same and closing on 286 so i have a length between uh, length of uh, of length between those two numbers and then <coughs> obviously i have the bar now i need to color it based on the change right if it's increasing uh, if the stock price has increased on that day it should be a certain color if it's not uh, if it decreased it should be a fun uh, color so for, for that i'll create another color holding the information if it has increased or not so a uh, change in price if it's greater than zero on that day then uh, consider them as one category and the other is another uh, so let me put that in color and just change the colors uh, wherever it has increased uh, put that green and wherever it has not put that right so yeah so here the stock price has increased from 279 to 286 so it is green uh, it has decreased from 286 to 281 so it is red and likewise for all of them. now i have created the thick bar which is uh, related to the opening and closing price now i need to create the thin bar uh, for high to capture the information of high and low uh, it's a it's a similar uh, technique uh, that i've used here i'll just pull my uh, high uh, to make uh, uh, this chart and let me just drop all this information from here uh, okay it's a uh, bar again and uh, again i need to create the length of now the bottom chart uh, uh, reciprocating to the difference between high and low so i'll create an like calculated field change in size and we, we have got that and let me just uh, reduce the size thickness of the bar thereby it looks like a uh, slight line and then let me uh, create a dual axis for these two so they overlap properly um, where is it the dual axis and let me okay now to make show header synchronize axis and uh, last thing let me just remove the zero from the header so that we got this line and 
so it slightly uh, can adjust the uh, thickness of the bars uh, accordingly uh, uh, so, yeah <coughs> and I, I, now we have created uh, achieved what we want to convey so high and low uh, as a thin line and the opening and closing as a thick line and the color representing either increment or decrement uh, I can so one thing I can do here is you can see that the thin line uh, is uh, is basically on the top of the thick line so I can uh, uh, select the axis that is representing the thin line and send, set that to backward so that way it's kind of clean now and then uh, after that I have few, uh, some formatting that will uh, make this a little more better so let me just hide this axis and uh, I can now uh, change the title to surprise okay and then the, I can see some lines here there so I'll just uh, edit them as well uh, red lines now and uh, I think that's it. Uh, hey Jagadish, uh, so can you just tell how did you send uh, one of the axes back? Right, the lines uh, you sent them back, right? Yeah, uh, so we have the option that so I select here, I have move marks to the front. So as oh, okay. of now, they are on the back. Acha, acha, acha. Okay, okay, open to the front, is it? So you uncheck and it will go back, is it? Acha. Right, yeah. Got it. Okay, sounds good. So yeah, so that's how we create a, a candlestick chart. So as of now, uh, the proper use case for this is obviously the stock price. But you can find if you find any similar cases where you have to uh, uh, represent the high and low, and also that uh, change. I think this is the uh, this would be the prop, uh, proper chart to represent that sort of information. That's nice. Yeah, perfect. Hey, using Gantt for even that line is interesting. You used Gantt only, enough for line also? Yes. Oh, that's nice. That's very nice. Because typically you would think, see, if you look at uh, what's that, uh, uh, there's a framework that you mentioned uh, um, uh, in that article, uh, Jera, SFC or something. What's that called? Uh, I forgot to test. <laughs> Uh, I think it was the F FDC principle. FDC, yeah, right. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah. yeah so, anyways, that's good. So, we have that line and, you know, so that's a can. That's that's beautiful. So, actually, one other thing I thought you would do is to mark the beginning and the ending. So, you didn't really mark the beginning and ending. You only mark the, you know, the, the beginning, right? And the change, right? So, change, if the, it's positive, it goes up. Right. Otherwise, it goes down. Right. Right. So, that's also very interesting. Mm. That's good. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, okay. So that's about the candlestick chart. And let's just quickly take a look at a couple of tips. And it will close the for today. <coughs> so for tip one. Um, <coughs> uh, so this is a, a simple tip. Uh, what it's about uh, is basically, let's say we are uh, trying to create a chart like this or any similar chart where we have to we have two fields okay uh, basically here in this case both the category and subcategory so as on here if you see uh, I have category as a first line and subcategory as a second line and the split of uh, and the visualization is basically telling a uh, split of that particular subcategory across each of the uh, segment uh, segment uh, for sales uh, Normally, if you have two club, uh, two distinct fields, uh, you can uh, create a calculation uh, saying, uh, let's say, category, since both are strings, I can just concatenate them using this this approach, category plus subcategory, and uh, click OK, and the calculation, I will bring this here. Uh, yeah. So if you see what happened here, uh, let me just run. Yeah. Okay, let me edit this. So there's a space in between. Yeah. 
yeah so normally uh, if you see when when we uh, create a calculation like that as calculation 2 uh, the both the fields will appear in a uh, single line so uh, just because uh, since the space was less earlier for the column it appeared in uh, just like this but uh, for for calculation 1 no matter how much space i give uh, it appears in uh, double line uh but not for uh this one for example if i put it up uh which is this back uh okay let me even more yeah i can see it in double lines but uh, now uh, when i give enough length it will be in a single line but not the, the calculation one is not like that it's no matter how much space you give it they'll they'll continue to be in two lines so sometimes it might be a requirement where you want uh, 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 information in two lines uh, 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 like this irrespective of the size of the column so in that how do, how do we achieve this is a simple change that we have to make to the calculation that we created uh, all we have to do is edit this and uh here in the plus uh, you just make sure that you have each each field in a separate line so for example like this so <coughs> category and uh, subcategory are the two to in two different lines and that will take care of the uh, uh information so now we can see them both in two distinct lines so again it's a simple tip but whenever it's required it, uh it's a helpful tip um that's tip number 1 and for tip number 2 uh, <coughs> uh it's something about uh it's related to formatting okay uh so uh, if any one of you have worked on tableau workbooks earlier creating dashboards and all so you might have noticed that almost <coughs> it's it's some in uh, on some dashboards it's easy to create visualizations okay and uh, create the uh uh uh, uh sheets uh, or uh, any number of sheets but uh, uh most time consuming part when while putting together a dashboard is basically it will go in formatting uh giving the right color uh, right uh, making sure that the tool two tips are all aligned font colors are aligned on, on all the labels so formatting takes a lot of time uh, when 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 you on a certain dashboard so this tip is about formatting where you can save save some uh, time uh, uh, so in, in, uh, uh, instead of manually formatting and keeping uh, making sure uh, uh, it, i'm um, sorry uh, manually formatting each and every single page there's an option for you to basically copy formatting okay let's let's see uh, what it does so as of now uh, there i have two two sheets let's say all, both these sheets are supposed to go in a dashboard and uh, uh, and i want these sheets to look similar okay uh, uh, in terms of formatting like color and etc i want them to uh, look similar so in that case i can use this copy formatting option and let's see what 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 it does so first first of all let me change the formatting in this sheet itself uh, uh, as i want and then i'll just copy the formatting that i've created here uh, uh, onto the sheet So first of all, uh, there are grid lines. So let me quickly remove uh, those grid lines. Uh, I don't want grid lines. And uh, uh, next, uh, if you if you notice the line here uh, for at the starting of each bar, that it's a uh, it's slightly thicker. So that's because of the zero lines which we have. So let me create. Uh, uh, let me set it to none. Or in fact, let me actually make it slightly lighter. and change the color to black uh yeah, let's go and uh, and so th- th- those of you things that have uh, and i've also uh, went ahead and changed the color of these things just to understand how the formatting works okay i've put the headers uh for uh, uh category field as yeah, in red color and uh, header uh, uh names so basically category and subcategory the titles uh as blue color and likewise we this are also in blue color and uh, let me go ahead and do some change for changes to the labels and the tips as well uh so so as of now the uh, the labels here are just black let me change them uh, to some color okay blue and make it maybe slightly bigger yeah <coughs> okay 
and uh, in the tooltip what we have in the tooltip we okay uh, so in the tooltip uh, i've just made some uh let me change this it's about two feet and color it So I've created just some formatting in the tooltip as well, just to see, uh, uh, check if the co formatting uh, copies uh, on the tooltips as well on uh, from sheet to sheet. So I have made few changes. I've made, uh, I've removed the grid lines. I've added some coloring to the headers. Uh, I've uh, changed the font for the labels. I've changed the font for the tooltips. So le now let me just copy all of these things uh, onto uh, this sheet where I have mark color as this. I have different uh, header colors and uh, on the labels, uh, let me just see how the labels are here. Okay, I have labels with black color and uh, and of lower font size. And on the tooltip, I have same uh, uh, some default tooltips. So let's see uh, when I do copy formatting, what what will change and uh, uh, yeah. So let me just copy formatting and come to the sheet and click paste formatting. So a lot of things has changed. Uh, the mark color has changed. Uh, the label color and font has changed and uh, this uh, header title also has also changed and uh, uh, tooltip let's see the tooltip uh, but the tooltip has not changed okay uh, so uh, copy formatting will not work on tooltip but on our rest of things but one more thing to note here uh, let's say uh, on this sheet if you have noticed uh, you you have uh, each uh, i would say row pane okay is dividing up by category just in case if in this sheet if it, it was not the case okay instead of category let's say i have a uh, subcategory okay uh, in this case and uh, if i have to copy the formatting again copy from the sheet uh, uh, and here uh, so basically it wouldn't change the uh, uh, color for uh, subcategory so so basically the copy formatting will work based on the color that you have assigned to the field hey you have assigned red color to category so if i find category in this particular sheet i will assign red color to that uh, if you assign some color to the subcategory uh, field and wherever i find subcategory uh, i'll assign that color to that particular field so it works like that it can be very helpful tip in order to save some time uh, when you're working on dashboard then you have to go through the same formatting for uh, multiple sheets so it can save some time uh, so Zagdish, uh, so it basically means the uh, the dimensions used should be the same for the formatting to be copied is that right uh no so uh, all i'm saying is uh, there is no oh, condition as a you can use copy formatting whenever you want on any sheet there is no requirement of having same dimensions but if at all you use uh, same dimensions then the color will uh, uh, translate but if you use new dimensions you might want to uh, uh, the color will not be translated because that was that dimension was not used here you have to uh, set the color for that dimension okay. according okay got it Assuming it's like where you have one dual axis chart and the other one is like single axis. So if we copy formatting from single axis and if we paste it in dual axis, like how it works? Uh, I would say, <clears throat> let's see. I think the mark color will will go, uh, uh, will, will continue. Uh, label will also continue. Uh, I can quickly check. Okay, I think that should be enough. 
So it's only affecting for the fields on the which are common in both the sheets. So for profit, since it's new, again as I said, it will, you have to come and manually add formatting to this. Okay. But on the labels and all uh, of common stuff, I think it will okay. For labels, it work. It didn't work. Uh, let's just try again. Okay, for labels on the dual axis also, it's 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 something that we have to deal. Okay, now uh, just uh, any questions as of now on any of the uh, tips or chart that we have created? No questions from my side. So, um, do we have uh, see in uh, Office we have this copy formatting kind of a thing, right? Do we have such an option uh, like within the sheet? Oh. Uh, Apart from the one that we just saw, checking out. Uh, yes, so this is across uh, sheets and uh, everything across sheets will get copied, right? Mm -hmm. So the question that I have is, let's say, for example, you had, uh, so you can typically, let's say you, there are like uh, maybe three or four columns, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, let's say for two, you have one formatting, for other two, you have one formatting, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's assume for the time being. Mm -hmm. So in that case, can I like copy one formatting to another column, something like that? Is that possible? I'm just trying to understand. Oh, within a sheet, right? Within a sheet, yes. Oh, okay. Mm, as of now, I don't think that we have an option for that. We have okay. within a sheet, we have to arrange whatever uh, uh, right. that we have. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, very soon we'll hopefully get what is called a copy formatting special, <laughs> wherein you can <laughs> You know, sort of format, sort of paste only some uh, formatting and not the other, right? Mm -hmm. So you know how in Excel they, we have what's called a paste special, right? Right, right. Uh, so you can choose, you know, various combinations, and then you can just paste that and not the other. Uh, yes, nice. Yes. 